Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Logan Writers Festival interviews. So I am very excited to have a frequently reoccurring member of the Logan Writers Festival. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I was going to say tonight. It's not quite tonight for us yet. Uh, Cynthia yet. Terrellst. Thank you, Rhiannon. It's great to be here and great to be back at the Logan Writers Festival as well. Oh, it's going to be beautiful to have you along. I would love to get more romance writers into the festival because romance writers are the ones who know how to do business. When you're a romance writer, you it's like, um, oh gosh, I'm just trying to think of some other businesses that are really easy to sell because romance, the readers are voracious. Um, they just want more and more from you. And I know some romance writers that read, you know, three books a week. Yep, it's insane. Mm. And as writers, we can't keep up with the needs of our readers. So we like to share that love around and it's a really good community. Mm -hmm. So we we don't compete with each other because no. we know that the readers are out there to read all of us. Yes. And I think that it's a very specific itch that gets scratched when you're reading romance. So well, I remember it, it's difficult for me to pick up romance anymore um, because I just, there's something, uh, th there's something that's not quite hitting it for me. Um, so I used to just absolutely devour it. it. You know, it filled up all of my bookcases, um, especially in my later teen years. Uh, but then as I got older, I was really after ones that had some kind of symbolic message behind them. Um, and romance can do that, absolutely. It's just less frequent uh, when you see it in romance. You uh, have to dig further to find it. <laughs> Yeah, so I like to try and deliver books with messages or that cover social issues like um, domestic violence or um, drug use or things like that. Um, the drought in Queensland, just mm. just touch on the subjects. I don't go full blown into the subjects, but it's important for readers to read about them because it's real life. Yes, yeah. And I think when you make it real, that that little bit of hopeful fantasy that you can find uh, the Mr. or Mrs. Wright, that you can have someone who's a bit of a soulmate uh, and have someone that you're on this beautiful journey through life with uh, in in all forms of the term. Um, when you make the rest of the book feel real, it makes that part feel real. It makes that hopeful element feel so obtainable. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, when I, I think I, I've got uh, Let Sleeping Dogs Lie on my, actually, I'm, I can reach it. <laughs> I've got this one of yours uh, yeah. and I, I haven't read it yet. I think I got through two chapters and then I, I, I will finish it eventually. But I did realise that Second Chance Romance is not the itch that I need scratched. I absolutely love my medieval and period drama romances and that sort of stuff um yep. so it, it's so enlightening you can't just say that romance is one genre because it really isn't oh no you've got sci-fi romance alien mm -hmm. romance historic romance contemporary romance there's so many different types of romances out there and then they break down into the levels of sex that you're exposed to or the levels of romance you're exposed to in those romances um and yeah there's so many different elements that can go along with it it's such a well fleshed out genre um and there's a little bit for everyone there sure is and <laughs> once you find an author I find that once you find an author that you like you go and read all of their backlist and then you try and find someone similar to that yes yeah and thankfully uh, especially with the Logan Writers Festival we're able to share that love around so you're able to find authors that are like you um, so how many books do you have in your backlist so I have six now I've published six well done and which one was your first? Um, the Cats Out of the Bag was mm -hmm. my first one. So that um, that's right. Yours had to... yours had a bit of an animal theme for a while, yes. didn't they? <laughs> they still do. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> so the animal that is mentioned in the title is often featured in the books. So sometimes they play a big part, and other times they play a small part, but they are present. Oh, beautiful! Oh, I yep. love that. That's so charming. Yeah. <laughs> no, so my I... last. 
Oh, sorry, go. No, no, I, I just knew that um, with sleep, Let Sleeping Dogs Lie and Cats Out of the Bag, I was like, oh, yes, that's right. I remember there was an animal thing. So I'm so glad to hear that you've carried that through. Yep. Um, so that's sort of my theme now. And um, the titles mean something. Like when you think about the cats out of the bag, that means a secret is re revealed. Mm, can't so, take it back. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, and that's what each of the books are. So Let Sleeping Dogs Lie, it's a second chance romance and they need to forget about what happened in their past and build on their future. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. Absolutely. So what's your latest book? The one I released in December is As Busy As A Bee and that features, it revolves around um, the main male character and he has anxiety mm -hmm. and he has suffered with anxiety since he was a child. Um, his family didn't quite understand it. He didn't get the support that he needed. So he moved away from home and then he returns home because he's feeling stronger, but there's still the underlying anxiety there as well. Yeah. Oh, so, and it's, that's something that affects so many of us these days. Yep, exactly. Um, now, when you, I think you are on an actual romance panel uh, for this year. Bindi would have sent you the email for that one. Um, but I do know that uh, you are our favourite romance writer. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's you or me cutting out. Oh, it could be me. My internet is always atrocious. Um, okay. <laughs> The, all I, I heard is I was on someone's panel. <laughs> oh, yeah. so I'm pretty sure that you, I, I think you are on the on a romance panel, but you may just have a, a talk by yourself at the moment. I can't remember which one you're on. Okay. But I do know that the talk you proposed was about uh, when you're practicing and you're getting feedback, how much you improve with your writing. Um, oh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yes, I think as humans or as authors, we are quite delicate and receiving feedback. Um, and if it's negative feedback, it can often hurt mm -hmm. and um, we take it to heart. And sometimes we tend to say, oh, no, I don't agree with that. But if you take uh, a day or two and then think it back over and reread what they have said to you, often it does make sense. Like the initial initial feeling is no. But then when you go back and think about it, what they're saying is correct and it can help you improve your writing. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I think it's so important to be open to that feedback as well. Um, but I think knowing who to accept it from and who is valuable in that sphere is very different to just letting people leave bad reviews. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. So when I receive feedback, if I'm asking for beta readers, I ask for those who um, enjoy romance. Yep. So, I mean, if you enjoy thrillers, I don't necessarily think your feedback will be valuable to me. Probably because, not. <laughs> I mean, some of it could be, but a lot of it like the expectations in romance, you're not going to know what they are and you don't, you're not going to know if I'm meeting those. So it's important to consider who and it's important to consider when as well, mm. because you can have critique partners and they're there when you are actually writing and developing, or you could have um, a developmental editor and that's usually after you've written the first draft, yep. or you could have beta readers and they're um, after you have developed had that feedback and developed it more and done some more self-editing so it's important to consider when you're going to receive feedback as well yeah absolutely oh i, I think um don't don't take feedback at the end of the day <laughs> have, it, have it be the frog you eat first thing in the morning make it like yep. the first task that you do um, and, and everyone has different processes as well. I know when my editor, so some people get absolutely horrified when they see what my editor sends back to me because they're delicate to that feedback. Um, I remember one time it was, I just asked her in a public group, uh, can you have a look at this letter that I want to send to teachers? Um, and she said, as a teacher, I think the way that you've spoken to them is insulting uh, and you need to change your language around this paragraph, this paragraph and this paragraph. And I was like, all right, great. Good to know. Let me work on that. But I, I had some other people message me outside of the group like, Brandon, are you okay? That was so harsh. <laughs> like, 
no, that's just her. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I needed to know as yeah. well. I yep. asked for that feedback. That's what I got yep. back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not really good with critique partners because giving someone that raw draft is not good for me because I haven't polished it. I haven't worked on mm. my ideas. So their feedback straight up, I I don't gel with it. So I don't have critique partners because it doesn't work for me. No. Uh, I think... Um... You've got to know what you want out of a critique partner. If you want so, if your confidence is brittle, uh, then you, and you need someone just to say, "Oh, these are the things I liked about it," then you can definitely ask someone to fulfill that role for you. But if you've got people uh, around you and you know that they're going to cut it to shreds, um, and, and for whatever reasons they've got, it could be that they love you and they want it to be the best that it can be, and so they're just going to be really harsh to to get that message through, or they see it and they're like, "Well, I'm just going to give my raw opinion because reasons. Uh, I think it's valid, and that's all that matters." Uh, ascertaining all of those different motives behind it is also important um, because yep. we, we never see the world just through our own lens. And this in romance, you see this more than anywhere else. We see the world through our lens and then other people see the world through their lens. So us trying to interpret someone else's feedback is just getting way too cloudy. Yep. Yes. So I have some good people on my team now that I receive good feedback from, but it took a while to find those. Mm. But I'm all, always searching out different um, readers as well because yeah. it's good to get different opinions. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah, incredibly valuable. Um, and from different... You, it might be different physical humans, but getting them from different cultures, different backgrounds, um, wherever it's relevant, age groups, uh, education levels, uh, all of these things can give you very different insight into how various audiences are going to see your work. Exactly. And if you know who your ideal audience is as well, that's very important for an mm. author because you need to cater to those needs. Who would you say your ideal audience is? I haven't quite figured that out yet. I can say they're female. Yep. I can say that um, generally they're educated. Um, they like to travel because often, well, my books are all set in Australia, mm -hmm. but sometimes my characters travel. So in my first book, they traveled across the Nullarbor. Oh, um, in beautiful. another book, they traveled up the west coast of Australia. So um, people that like to travel and explore new places, um, they're the sort of readers, my ideal readers. Excellent. And ones that are seeking a bit of romance. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely magical. Um, all right. Let me have a look at what you've got here. So what made you want to put your books in Australia? We don't, I don't feel like we see very many Australian uh, authors writing romance in Australia. And that's why I decided to do it. <laughs> That's precisely why. I think if I was going to write my book, say, in the United States, there would be a lot, I do a lot of research anyway, but there would be a lot more research required and I'd be worried that I get things wrong, whereas I'm more comfortable writing about Australia because I know I've travelled vastly so I can relate those things to readers. Hmm. Have you gone across the Nullarbor? Three times. Oh, <laughs> Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Do, have you been to all the places that you write about in your books? I, I'd say 80% of them. I wouldn't say all of them. Um, in one book, I actually, generally, I write about real places. Yeah. But in one book, the town was so horrible and the people in it were so horrible oh. that I had to make up a place. I, could, I couldn't. Oh, my gosh. I was like, yep. no, I can't put this label on anyone. I'm just going to make up a place. <laughs> you know what? That's entirely fair. I think uh, that's that artistic license is important. Uh, and for that to be the one place that you had to make up uh, says a lot about the diversity and uh, utility of the places in Australia that you've been to. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, I couldn't I insult anyone. <laughs> our, uh, our, our mower lady is here. 
she she just she came a bit later than normal so if there are whippersnipper noises i sincerely apologize uh but that's uh, okay yards must yard especially before yes. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just oh. ignore it if we hear it yeah yeah beautiful i'm glad that it's not too loud <laughs> Oh, all right. Just um, beware that you could hear a cat too. <laughs> so my, my, mine's not in the room at the moment. My daughter's just moved home. She's 26 years old. So that's a bit of a struggle because we're adjusting to life together again. But she's brought home her cat. My two cats are senior, so 14 and 15 years old. And he is two. Aww. So he, he doesn't understand. I reckon he's got autism because he doesn't understand social cues. <laughs> And he it's just doesn't give up. Thing. It is honestly the other such ones, a cat thing. The other ones are like, will you just leave me alone? I am growling at you. Don't you get the message? And he just sits there and stares. <laughs> you know what? Um, we've got uh, we've got two and a half cats here at the moment. Um, so the, the two older ones, one is mum's. So he's only here half the time. Um, okay. But we've got two cats and they uh they they're not social they don't like each other they haven't ever since they arrived uh they don't they'll tolerate one another but that's the extent of the relationship they have and i have a brand new baby cat and he is so excited to go and play with them and wants to go <laughs> run up and introduce himself because he would came from the shelter where he was in a room full of other cats and yep. was quite social um it's just so hilarious to see how jarring it is for them. And they're warming up to him so well. So oh, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> One <laughs> day my two might warm up. <laughs> it takes stubbornness. <laughs> oh, and feeding time, like we have to separate them literally at feeding time because one of my cats has hyperthyroidism. So she thinks she's starving all the time and she'll oh. eat everyone's food. But oh, if no. she does that, then she vomits. Yeah. So we're like, okay, each one goes into a separate room and you can eat that way. <laughs> oh, goodness. So you released uh, your latest book last December um, and it, Busy Bee, Anxiety. Do you have another one coming out uh, this year at all? Or what, what does your writing schedule normally look like? Oh, until my daughter moved home, I would go to work during the day and then I would come home and most of my afternoon, so two or three hours would be taken up um, with writing yep. or writing related things. Um, but since she's moved home, she's taken up more of my time. <laughs> so <laughs> As no longer, I want to no do. No longer two or three hours. It's generally one hour, which I'm struggling with because I have deadlines. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's we just have to learn to deal with that. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, well, I hope that everything goes very well. And thank you so much for speaking to me today, uh, Cynthia. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the 9th and 10th of June uh, and enjoying another Logan Writers Festival with you. Thank you. It will be great. I look forward to it. <laughs>